So I'm really going to label this one as we've been working with the answer process, we've had the answer workshops and we keep maintaining those processes there. This now we're look, going to look at the analysis of the games and basically break it down, keep it nice and simple, straightforward and basically look at the answer process um, being utilised um, constantly, not trying to change anything. Don't think there's anything else I need to add to it because there is a lot already in there. But the main headings which we've come to are basically using the, the like candidate type situation to help us drive through the answer process in order to be able to get put pressure onto the king area, onto key pieces, onto key squares and basically being able to put that type of pressure on the opponent but the key thing to remember is the opponent is attempting to do that to me as well so I've got to be able to look at blocking their um, attempts at actually gaining an advantage looking at the key spaces that they are attacking looking at the key pieces that they're attacking so you doing the reversal of what I want to do to the opponent but also making sure I'm trying to make sure that the blind spots are covered so it's so key because you are playing somebody else they they too will be using the answer process in some shape or form because they want to checkmate your king or they want to get as many pieces off the board as possible so that you can no longer continue playing the rules and guidance for the answer they can't be refuted because it is the game of chess so we're looking at trying to drive through these changes as best possible so we pushed through with the old e4 business and then brought the knight up as you know just to basically hopefully make some space on the king side so that we can start driving through with the castling, keeping the king safe, etc. So we captured it in the centre here because, as we know, we do like to open up that centre so that it allows us to work around the centre as best possible. So they capture. So we block the pawn off, all pretty simple, straightforward stuff. So we see a space, we're attacking the king ordinarily. I mean, sometimes they do bring the bishop in this situation here, but uh, you, no times out of 10 to bring the pawn here so I'm always ready to just bring the bishop here and that's got a twofold effect when they bring that pawn down there's a rationale behind it so they do bring the pawn down so now this square is the almighty square for the knight so what we've done is entice them to attack the bishop they've actually put it there if they came out with a bishop we'd take the bishop off but Recently, in this type of uh, position, most players are pushing this pawn. That then slows down the development of one piece. So the key thing again is about understanding tempo and uh, the rhythm of the game. And if you can sort of win tempos in terms of blocking off the opponent's time to develop their pieces, then it gives you more time to grab key key spaces, yeah, like this here, because this is a nice nice outpost for the knight. So the bishops here just managing this square at the moment. So they push through now, trying to obviously make space for their knight. But this pawn has been moved twice, so in my head I'm thinking, ooh, I'm up too small tiny tempi those rhythm, rhythms are so important especially when you've got time to concentrate uh, in the longer games uh, this game this game was a 45 minute 10 45 minute 15 second game so we brought our queen through putting a check on their king basically taking advantage of that win in tempo oops excuse me move too fast there and then they brought their queen down and as I just did then I was more to set to think he was going to bring his bishop out so that he's going to make space for castling 
so when he did this queen move I already had started moving this pawn to attack this pawn because I assumed he was bringing his bishop there so that was a failing on my side because ordinarily I would just take the queen off the ball but because I thought oh well it's just going to do the bishop move boom so got to wait see what the opponent actually does first before making the move sounds pretty obvious but sometimes when you get more to set you go well yeah this is what they're going to do but it's not always what they're going to do so got to basically sit on the hands not make um, knee jerk reactions or predictive moves do, the, do it in your head but not physically so they grab and we grab here so I'm not fairly comfortable with this position now because I'd missed he'd kind of clawed back that temp, one of the tempies that he was back on in my head because I didn't like this position that I was in so they grabbed so in a sense I'm thinking oh okay I might have got it back because now my knight's centralized and my bishop's grabbing the pawn so now we've got pieces in the center of the board managing around the center of the board so they come and attack so this gives us an opportunity to develop our bishop to defend and we castle king safety all pretty straightforward there so I did take a while over this next move because what I was thinking was I mean he's looking to take the knight off the board if we take then bishops in the middle maybe is he looking to actually take the bishop off the board as some sort of fancy sacrifice I'm thinking I don't want to lose out here so I'm thinking it's probably better to actually come and rest nice and steadily on here because then if he does take then the rook can take and then it's on in the file so we brought the rook across gauge bar is not happy with that but anyway so we he, they grabbed anyway so we seem to have gained a little bit of advantage there so I felt like that was the right move for the rook even though the gauge bar wasn't happy with it I felt comfortable with it so they bring their knight out and we start developing our knight so now we're managing the squares around the center some may say that is the center but I'm managing the squares around the center in my head that's what I'm doing there's no more pawns left in there we've obliterated the pawn so now we're doing what we do within the answer process so they push the pawn down obviously looking to protect the pawn here maybe bringing the knight across wasn't too sure on that so we've got a nice x-ray through now taking our time focusing on looking for the higher pieces so nice x-ray through to the rook but also nice placement here to tantalize the uh, rook a little bit so he brings his rook down looking to block us from actually coming to this square here so we bring our rook looking for the exchange he doesn't take and he brings his bishop offline and it looks like it's trying to attack this situation here so we take the rook off the board now he's got a single isolated pawn in the center of the board so now we can attack this pawn and if he does push it the bishop can take so the rook comes to defend so at this moment now it's a matter of thinking well okay he's defending the pawn but the pawn really isn't going to go anywhere if we get like a fork on his rook and his bishop then one of them will be falling he moves his knight so we take with a check on the king because I'm liking the position because we're going to win a pawn so we grab feeling fairly comfortable with the situation at the moment at this point here I did say okay this is time to just now chill look at the board don't over exert in any way and just see what the opponent's going to bring to the table because we're plus one at this moment in time don't want to blow it so they attack us so we bring the bishop just managing these key squares here quite nicely just for a moment which kind of frees up our rook potentially to come to one side or the other facing off the bishop facing off the pawns on either side 
if we're allowed to. So the bishop comes down protecting the pawn, so also attacking our pawn. So we didn't want to rush anything, like we said, we just wanted to take our time now and look at what the opponent is potentially going to try and do. So that was a nice touch, he's defending his pawn, it's all good. So we do have this space, like we mentioned earlier, potentially looking to come and put checks on the king to win maybe one of the pawns. Always mindful that this back rank checkmate stuff can kick off. Very mindful that he potentially might be looking to do some sort of attack here. Potentially easily defended. So all these little thoughts were going through with my head playing this game. So we bring the rook up. And we continue the attack on the king because the opponent's not brought his rook facing our king just yet. So he's going for the exchange. So gladly taking at this moment. Gage Bar's not happy with that. I'm very happy with that. The plus one status that we've got, the position that I've got on the board, feeling fairly comfortable that we should be able to do something with this. Their time was running down, they were on 34 seconds and I was on one minute and something. In fact, what am I doing? I'm looking at the... It's a two minute and one second. This is a bullet match, this one. Ah, dear me. This is the one before. I played the um, longer play games. Hey, yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay, so I have to bring the king across. So we push up now, just supporting our bishop, and we just start to get in a nice position for the pawns. Don't really want them on white squares because, as you know, he's got a white square bishop. As you can see on the key on the other side of the board, the king side, the pawns are on black squares as well. So we push up now, because now we're thinking we can actually put some pressure on this pawn. But I did feel that something was not quite right with it. So we pushed up, grabbed, okay, so we're nice and safe. Now we're still on the dark square. So we pushed up brought the king up now looking to defend these pawns and I was thinking well am I realistically going to get these pawns up there something's telling me his bishop's going to block us so we bring the bishop up put a check on the king move it up so that it's on a dark square and then we give the king a little bit of a barricade but then his bishop was getting a little bit clever so I'm thinking this cannot be a draw but obviously the time is running out so I didn't want to do any repetitions there that's it there that's the winning position now I did not make the right move f5 so I was moving around I was like well I've got 47 seconds so I still had time to do something he's on 11 seconds and I definitely didn't want it to come out being a draw oh I could have just done that oh how sad is that Oh, it's good doing evaluation. You pick out these things. Could have just done that. But instead, move backwards and forwards. Push this pawn up. Oh, God, there was a win somewhere. What was it? Oh, the bishop putting a check on the king. Oh, I probably did that later, later on. Bishop putting a check on the king. Oh, what does he do? Oh, Oh, it's all over. He's not going to escape. Oh, dear me. Oh, damn it. Pressure of time, but still, I want to be getting these types of things. Dear me. Oh, that's good. Okay, so we push the pawn up. And then we actually lost the pawn. I'm like, oh, you're joking me. But he's only got six seconds, so don't do a repetition. So it's not going to be by skill. Well, skill of time. And then at that point, they ran out of time. Oh, a few little snippets there to take away with quite nicely. It does help. Nice one.